welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle. And we're just two best friends and ex Blockbuster employees re watching some of our favorite movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we're going royal with The Princess Diaries from 2001. The movie is the story of Mia Thermopolis finding out that she is the heir to the Genovian throne and the antics that ensue as she learns how to be a princess. And you can find this movie currently on Disney+. Plus. Um, well, I'm super excited about this one, Jackie, especially since we have Samantha from Lovefool99 joining us for this episode. Hi, Samantha. Hello, ladies. <laughs> Thank you for Welcome. having me. Of course. Of course. I know you were super excited when I mentioned this movie that we were doing. And mm-hmm. so, so glad that you could be here with us. Before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. So, you know the drill, before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating of our Y2K versions of ourselves we give, and then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. So, our scale consists of, would buy it, would buy it again. The best, would play on repeat. I like how you said the best this time. (laughs) (laughs) Five-day rental. Would watch again. Two-day rental. And it's just all right. And same day rental. Trash. Royal trash. (laughs) Well, Samantha, we'll start with you. What did your Y2K version of yourself think of this movie? So I was 14 and I even saw this movie with my grandma. Like we made a day of it and everything. I know. Oh, don't make me cry. May (laughs) she rest in peace. So I definitely enjoyed it. I felt connected to Mia, like her awkwardness, her clumsiness was me. I loved it. And as soon as I, as soon as it came out, I bought it and watched it regularly. I am right there with you. Would buy it, would buy it again. Own I, it. I own it now. Yes. I, I own, I own it. If they put out more, I'd probably buy it, even though it's on Disney plus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely one of my quarantine movies and it's just, I have a close relationship with my grandma too. So Mm -hmm. I I do love that. And huge, huge Julie Andrews fan. And Jackie's mom's kind of partly responsible for that. And so is my mom because my mom introduced me to Sound of Music and Jackie's mom introduced me to Victor Victoria. So it's just like, you know, two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Jackie, what about you? Would buy it, would buy it again. This movie I loved and I opened the store at Blockbuster every Sunday morning. And this is the movie I would put on again, not putting on the Blockbuster trailer, but going rogue. But that's how I started every Sunday morning at Blockbuster. Aww. Was that Princess I would Diaries? Princess was your Sunday morning? I it like was. That. That's it, cute. It was so like the mood when I would come into work with you on a shift and you have that on would totally change me like saying I hate this place because then I would be really (laughs) excited I would literally be twirling as I put movies back (laughs) because I was so happy that this movie was on well it's one of those anytime you look at it you're smiling or laughing at it yeah it's it's just a happy feel good movie well obviously before we get started I I have to (gasps) oh Oh my goodness. I have to put my crown on. It's That's it's actually beautiful. one of my finest crowns. Yes, I have multiple. Um, <laughs> it is the best that China can be, bring oh us. My yeah. Goodness. I that don't know. So pretty. <laughs> As a queen should, she should have multiple. Yes. yes. And that's tiaras. how I knew Jackie was gonna be my BFF for life because one of my birthdays she bought me a tiara. And I was oh just like, goodness. she she gets oh. me. <laughs> A tiara and a Han Solo action figure. There you go. Over to Danielle's heart. <laughs> I won't be able to wear it. it the whole episode because it's really not going to stay on my head, but I do very it's much beautiful. love a crown. I love that. That's beautiful. So the movie starts, we see Mia's house where she lives with her mother. It is a converted fire station, which is super neat. Mia comes out of the house. She's getting ready to go to school. She had an electric scooter before scooters were cool. Yeah, I, I you know what? I, wa- I watched this during the quarantine and I that is something I didn't pay attention to, but having to rewatch for this episode, I was like, wait a minute, Did, were those a thing? Yeah. 
Apparently. And they I don't remember look like my they've... friend's brother but... having one. I do <laughs> around okay. that time. Cause I don't remember seeing it too much later, but you know, way to go, Mia. Yep. <laughs> Mia. <He's... laughs> Setting trends. <laughs> She says good morning to Mr. Robitussin, the disgruntled <laughs> next door neighbor who's trying to write the next great American novel. <laughs> I love his name, Mr. Robitussin. Yes. I like he's not very nice. He doesn't have good manners. No, he does not. He does not. I do like that as she is on her scooter going to school that her grandma's limo just passes by her. Mm -hmm. I just I never noticed, noticed that, that this time. Yeah, same. I was like, hey, never <laughs> noticed it. I never, yeah. So we get to school and we're kind of seeing the different cliques. There's the cheerleaders led by Lana, played by Mandy Moore. Lana, Anna, and Fontana. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and then you see Michael and Jeremiah. Okay. I love Jeremiah. Yeah. Yes. He was. I, everybody loved Jeremiah. He did not get enough screen time. Not at he all. He did not. Mm -mm. Justice mm -hmm. for Jeremiah, people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then we are introduced to Miss Gupta, played by Sandra O. Oh. The I star. Queen. Queen. <laughs> I stand. So we're also introduced to Mia's best friend, Lily, played by Heather Matarazzo from Welcome to the Dollhouse fame. Love that movie. It's so good. <laughs> and so they're just chilling, waiting for class to start. Mia randomly said, somebody sat on me again. I guess an attempt to show that she's invisible, but. Yeah, I had an issue with that because a, ki a kid actually does sit on her. And when Gupta goes over, she says hi to Lily. Oh, and Lily's friend because she doesn't. I'm like, okay. She doesn't know which kind of hair care products to to use for the, she, the curly she's hair. She's just got Hermione Granger vibes. Yeah, but yeah. like she's not forgettable. Like, no. come on. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, she. But when she says that to Lily, Lily completely disregards what she's saying and gets so enthralled in Lana and Josh making out, and then she just jerk and jerk at sighting. Yeah. So she. <laughs> so this is like the first glimpse that you see that Lily is a shit friend. I, yes. I have that here. Thank you. I, yes. I have it several times too. Like, <laughs> oh, it makes me so mad every time. She's such a butthole. Yeah. Yes. And then I have a question. Why is Josh played by Eric Von Deden? Why is his hair always so greasy? Okay. Uh... I'm going to interject here. I just was having this conversation with my husband last night. He had long hair before and we were watching Loki and I was saying, Loki's hair is so greasy. And he goes, yes, guys with long hair have to have greasy hair. And I go, why? And he goes, cause it needs to be back. And he kept doing that back. And so I was like, oh, okay. So, but yes, I hate greasy man hair and it grosses It's so me out. gross. That's all I think yes. about is his greasy hair. Loki does have really greasy hair too. I, yes, he does. So where are we and where, um, are they in choir class yet or are they, no, they're in debate class. It's all one room. <laughs> the school just has the one room. Just the one room. <laughs> all the instruments are around the the perimeter because it's each class right now. <laughs> Eric Von Denton sitting there pretending to play the piano, which was stupid. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and so it's speech class. Uh, he is talking about how... They shouldn't have uniforms at school, blah, blah, blah. And then it's Mia's turn to go. And she has really bad sh stage fright. And so she ends up puking instead of having a rebuttal. <laughs> right. And can we talk about how Lana shames her? Obviously, we know she threw up because she was nervous. But Lana, full on mean girl disgustingness, makes fun of her about having an eating disorder mm -hmm. and calling her bulimic. And I'm just like, well, what is she really was? I mean, I feel like that was a pretty, um, I, I didn't even remember that joke. When I watched it, I go, oh my gosh, they put that in there. And yeah. then, you know, I just, that was, that was a, not even a funny joke, really. Yeah. 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 Long, yeah that, uh, Mandy Moore's awful in this movie. <laughs> yeah. She really is. So the next scene that we see is Mia at her job at the rock climbing studio and her mom comes in to slyly tell her by the way your grandmother 
who we don't ever talk to called and would like to meet with you. And so, you know, Mia calls her out, like, we don't talk to this lady. And didn't she try to break up you and dad? Why am I meeting with her? Her mom kind of just says, just do it. You know, just meet her. It's your dad's mom, you know, nothing else to it. So Mia agrees to go meet her grandma. The next scene is Mia showing up at the Genovian consulate, I guess. Yeah. Um, She walks on the grass. That that part always makes me laugh. I don't know. (laughs) Kids, teenagers with no respect. (laughs) I just, I always, I see that. I go, who, you see the driveway. Like it's a perfect little path. Why would you walk on the grass? Yeah. Yeah. And then they're kind of patting her down once she gets into the building (laughs) and she says, please don't crush my soy nuts. (laughs) It was like they just had to throw in a nut joke. So she meets with her grandmother. Her grandmother kind of drops the the bomb on her that she's a princess and uh, and she's needed to run the country of Genovia. First of all, I'm still waiting for this magical grandma to tell me I'm a princess because I know it. I know it exists. I'm just waiting. I don't know why Mia was so mad. I never could get with that reaction. I mean, I understand the lying. I would have been more mad that I've been wasting my years taking shit from Lana, Anna, and Fontana when I'm a motherfucking princess. (laughs) That's what I would have been mad at. The lies. I think I would have been, I would have been terrified as I would have, I would have very much had her reaction. (laughs) that age I what was about so awkward. you what about you Jackie well it was at this point as Y2K Jackie that I realized if I could pick my own grandparents I'd pick Julie Andrews and Patrick Stewart <laughs> <laughs> oh I love Patrick Stewart that's a great one great choice <laughs> So I, I mean, didn't really care about being a princess as long as Julie Andrews was my grandmother. That, that's definitely a different route. Wasn't expecting that, but great choices, honestly. So she finds out that she's a princess. Um, she's obviously really upset that her mother has been lying to her all this time, essentially. And mm-hmm. I mean, she seems pretty adjusted considering that I guess she just accepted that her dad died. Her mom just felt like enough, which, you know, didn't seem to be some longing, but I think I would have felt a kind of way because her dad was alive and it seemed like her, she never met him. Like what mm-hmm. that was just because they got divorced. That's super weird, but maybe that explains it because he was a prince. He didn't want to interrupt her life, but also the, the fact that I had this grandma who's a freaking queen who's never come to see me. I'm 16 and you're finally seeing me. I would be pretty, I would be mad about that as well. So yeah, she's obviously really upset. The grandmother comes over and the mom is trying to be kind of, you know. The middleman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And says that Mia will go to princess classes. And then after she does that, she'll make a decision after the ball if she wants to rule or not. So they come to that agreement, which, you know, Mia was pretending that she was not wanting to be a princess, but you know, she did. Like, yeah, she just, she, I think she's super stubborn. She just wanted to be mad for a bit, but I think she was secretly super stoked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I didn't mention earlier, do you guys know when Enver, they show a picture of her dad, that's really Anne Hathaway's dad. Yeah. I just learned that just doing the research. I had no mm-hmm. idea. She had a lot of input in this movie considering. I I saw that. I think Gary Marshall's really good about that mm-hmm. with his movies and stuff. I've heard that and read that before with his movies. He bring out the personality yeah. of the real yeah, actor into let them the character. Take their character yeah. You know, they're the character and he likes to hear from them and everything. And he seems to be really collaborative with that. And with how much little things that Mia did just naturally improvise or um, Anne Hathaway, I should say. Yeah. I thought that was really cool, especially with her being so young at like 17 and her being her first movie. I'm, it's, I bet that really empowered her and made her feel good. And, you know, yeah, a young I think, woman in Hollywood, you know, like for her, the one thing I did love about her, so many people have these like iconic roles and same thing. We talked about this, what we did legally blonde and Reese Witherspoon, like they both never, you know, said anything bad about their roles or try to like run away Mm -hmm. from it or be like a bad girl. I mean, Anne Hathaway does talk about how hard it was for her to get 
roles, different meteor drama roles after this movie because she was so typecast, but she never talked bad about her experience. And she's always been on board to do that third movie. You Mm -hmm. know, now I think they're working on it, even though rest in peace, Gary Marshall has passed. I think the reason she feels that way partly is because of that experience with him as a director. And I'm sure that probably makes it really hard going into any other movie with all these other shitty directors who are Mm -hmm. like rude and misogynistic and all sorts of things after having starting off with such a great director, you know? Yeah. It's a blessing and a curse, I'm sure. There's a really great making of featurette. I think it's on the DVD that I've watched before and just how Gary Marshall creates that familial atmosphere on all of his sets. So we see Mia now has a limo. <laughs> and she meets Joe. We and forgot she that. Meets Joe. The best. Not Joey. He, isn't he adorable? Not just Joe. <laughs> I just think it's so cool that he and Julie Andrews work really hard to actually make their characters be in love with each other. Because mm-hmm. um, it was never written in the script. He was the limo driver. And he saw was- Julie Andrews. He's like, mm-mm. Who I'm wouldn't let this moment pass? <laughs> Who wouldn't? I mean, <laughs> seriously. He saw uh, an opportunity. He's like, I need to do this. Yes. <laughs> so they go, they pick up Lily. Can we have a moment to talk about Lily's hair choices? <laughs> Trash. Oh it's amazing. Yeah. There were lots of butterfly clips. There were lots of tiny ponytails. It's like a her toddler hair. hairdo. It yes. reminded me of. I was like, Lily. And I, I feel like it's coming of a place where they have to wear uniforms. So they're all conforming. Yeah, so they're, they're her pieces of flair. They're her way to stand out and be her own individual self. But they were, they were not cute looks. No, no. <laughs> She's a cute girl, but his hairstyles, I was, yikes. Well, I think we did skip when they had their choir class. The only reason I brought it up was because that was the first time we were really introduced to Michael, AKA the the Mia stalker, because in that scene, he's literally playing the piano and you just see him. I mean, the staring. I don't know how she didn't know that boy liked her. It was crazy. Or maybe it's, you know what? Maybe it is after this scene. I'm so sorry. Because they're at the auto shop. Yeah. Well, anywho, we we got introduced to Michael for the first and, time. And, and Michael is played by Robert Schwartzman, brother of Jason Schwartzman. Is yeah. His? I and share his, a birthday with him. Oh, oh wow. Awesome. A, another yes. cancer. Love it. And his yes. mom is a Coppola. Yeah. She was oh, in yeah. the Godfather movies and he was the lead singer of the band Rooney. So then there's a throwaway line. That was probably funny in the early aughts, but hits home today. <laughs> the virtual homework may not be submitted oh. as actual homework. <laughs> oh, I did not hear that. So hard. <laughs> I heard that. I was like, oh my goodness. I'm like, well, <laughs> times have changed. <laughs> 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 and oh, then dear. we're at the PE class. Where Mia has to hit the ball in order to not fail PE. I mean, I don't know what kind of gym class. Yeah, it it was very odd. There's no way you would be, because gym does not equal actual talent. And some people, I mean, you may never be able to hit that ball. That shouldn't deter you from passing. I don't know. But was it? Eric on Denton so annoying as trying to coach her in just yes. being a mansplaining like, baseball. Ugh, <laughs> <so annoying. laughs> I can't even stand to watch them kiss when she has those daydreams of her kissing him for yeah. some reason. I don't ugh. know why he drives me nuts in this, just probably because of his character, but I'm just like, ugh. He did gross. a good job then. He did yes. a really good job. He knew the assignment and he did well. Yeah, he did. Him. And then Mia and Lily's kind of place to meet up after school is the basketball courts, which seem to be on top of the school. Yeah. And so then that's when Lily's telling Mia how her parents say that she's difficult and that she needs an attitude adjustment. And Mia's like the best friend because she just 
listens yeah as lily's ranting and raving not paying attention to whatever mia's troubles are nope. i doubt that even if mia started to tell her that she was a princess lily would cut her off and start talking about herself anyway so what's yeah. the point her first yeah. reaction was will you come on my show as yes soon as she found out, don't tell anybody and she goes will you come on my show yes no i just said we can't tell anybody and yeah. she's she does it multiple times i wrote in my notes this damn cable show <laughs> <laughs> well and then uh, mia was saying that she was a, having a hard time just like finding out that she has a grandmother and having to spend time with her and then she starts talking about her dad and lily says I thought you were getting over that. It's been two months and you've never met him. I, all I was doing in the movie after that scene was looking at the other girls in the movie and saying, who could be her new best friend? (laughs) I have some candidates. Mm -hmm. There is a black girl in one of the um, scenes when Mia gets her hair done and she's like, your hair looks so pretty. The only genuine nice person. I was like, that's her. I found her. There's there's your new friend, Mia. Yes. Lily's yes. honestly a really crappy friend. Even when she comes around, I just don't think she's super supportive. I just, no. I really didn't care for her character, even in the storyline, even my Y2K self, no. me now, I just don't care for her character. And the funny thing is, what I do like about her character being there, it's very relatable because every single one of us has had a friend like that in our lives. That's just toxic. That is toxic. And we had to yeah. learn and learn from that experience. And yes. she, we, we don't le- need lilies. If you got yeah. a lily dumper, she got, she got yeah. to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is one of those movie uh, friendships that you're just, I'm, I'm not a fan of. I don't not like BFF goals at all. No. And so now we are at the shop where mia has her baby her mustang i hate how she calls it her baby thank you how much for my baby (laughs) i hate it how's my baby doing i don't know it's a car first and foremost the fact that her grandma's like i guess i can give a little to that fun bitch you are a full rich lady (laughs) who has been ignoring her for so long hello and if you had given a little more, maybe the emergency brake wouldn't have come off in her hand later on and smashed into the bus. <laughs> We're getting it. ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the shop Michael, I guess, works at, helps out at something. Lives there. We don't know. <laughs> he, he's allowed to have his band practice there. Yeah. Go on. There's M&Ms all over his keyboard. For Why? Rep- so odd. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> to show that he likes M&Ms. Yeah, it's so dirty. Now in the state of my me being in, you know, the after the panini and all, <laughs> now I know putting my candy on the place where my dirty hands play, probably not the best thing. In the middle of a garage. Yeah, yeah. Not it's sanitary. Odd. It is very odd. And I want to know, like, whose idea was it? Was it one of Gary Marshall's grandkids or like, Grandpa, I think. I M&M. think it's a Grandpa idea. Yeah. That seems like just an old fart move. <laughs> it's just the whole thing seems so odd. Even then, I just wondered, why the M&Ms? Why this? And I thought maybe the M&Ms were a foreshadowing of something because how we got so many shots of the M&Ms and it never panned out. Oh, so my God. I don't get it. Michael. And Mia. Oh, Eminem. I'm just, we just, we're going to spread it around. Or Uh, they were like sponsoring the movie or something. I don't know. But those (laughs) M&Ms were everywhere. And I just, I kept thinking something's going to magical or romantic and happen with the M&Ms and nothing did. I mean, she put them on the pizza, which is gross. Nasty. (laughs) Super gross. And then I, I, I do really like that. After the practice, one of the man members goes, we're flypaper, fly away now. <laughs> <laughs> but with flypaper, you can't fly away. <laughs> well, I like when the girls were on the couch saying, he's so hot. He plays in a band and he works on cars. Like that makes him so hot. So le- <laughs> legit. I love that Doc completely called out Michael when Michael was like, <laughs> Mia, I'll help. Uh, I'll put in some time as if he actually knows what the hell to do with cars. Right. And Doc was like, 
that your game is soft, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we're back at the Genovian estate and Mia proceeds to go hand to hand with the statue and breaks its finger off. I don't know Again, what she so was weird. doing. <laughs> do and then she takes the finger and shoves it in the statue's mouth. <laughs> yeah. I watched the movie now and I'm like, which things were written and which things did Anne Hathaway inadvertently do? There's a scene where she kicks a garbage can when she's walking with her grandma or she kicks it something just randomly. And I was like, that was Anne Hathaway. Yeah. That was an artistic choice on her. Yeah. <laughs> so Clarice I- is kind of once overing Mia. Like so her- rudely. Yes. She was my grandma would kind. never talk to me like that. I felt at home with this scene. <laughs> oh. It's true. Yeah. My grandma, oh. I love her to death, but that was I felt my grandma like used I- to tell me the weirdest compliment. She used to tell me my armpits were pretty. And <laughs> I have gorgeous ears. Like Whoa. she, my grandma was a sweetheart. And so me and her were watching this and we were like, mm, mm, not nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My grandma would say, I don't see anything wrong. Just telling her the truth. Yeah. <laughs> I, f- I, I told my sister, I was like, I feel like we've been going through princess l- lessons and we didn't know it. <laughs> Maybe it's coming, Danielle, your time. My time. I'm ready to prepare you. <laughs> I'm ready to shine. <laughs> so she gives her a, a once over and then Mia goes off. Joe walks in and says, you've been wearing black for too long. Ooh. And oh. they start dancing, which I love the dance. Yeah. Wait, but was- also her husband died less than a year ago yeah but it so was she's an in arranged black. she's marriage. wearing black in mourning like yeah but it was an arranged marriage and she's probably i think he was pulling like a lily card like shouldn't you be over by now yeah <laughs> there, was so much, there was so I'm much here. like don't feel your grief in this movie yes right push it down like yeah. everyone else and then we go to there's a little clip of Jeremiah pulling a coin out of Lily's ear. <laughs> so, adorable red hair. And then we do get to Paolo Putnesca, <laughs> who is the dad from 10 Things I Hate About You. Yeah. <laughs> is he Italian? So great, I, yeah, he is so great. Oh, so good. I don't know. But I have, well, I only asked that because there's a scene later with him and Joe going back and forth. And I feel like they were saying Italian words. So I was... That's what made me question. But, but then I feel like he speaks German to the girls. Yeah, so confusing. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. He's just, he's just like... That, when he asks for the brush from one of his assistants... He's not Genovian? He's not supposedly Genovian? I don't think no, so. I don't think oh, okay. so. But that's a great question. What language and what accent are these people supposed to have so you have julie andrews we meet the prime minister later you have joe who sounds not no accent from the bronx right (laughs) so like is genovia like what the united states is trying to be like what what's happening there it's a melting pot yeah Yeah, that's what i took it as just (laughs) yeah just everybody use your whatever accent you got or something there wasn't a real like (laughs) no (laughs) I just thought it was interesting. Paolo, Paolo, why, I can't say that name. The hairdresser is sent in and he's trying to brush her hair. The brush breaks. Apparently when he says brush in whatever language he's speaking, I think it is German. He, what he says is actually translates to breast, not <gasps> brush. Oh no. <laughs> and no one noticed. So that is in the movie. And- broken brush was Anne Hathaway's idea yes and then he's talking to her about her glasses do you have contacts and, and he then breaks- he breaks her glasses again jerk move what yes. I, there's, there's so many things like little things like that that just infuriate me about this movie yeah because she doesn't does that she doesn't have her contacts right there how's she getting home yeah As someone who worked in an optometry office it's not just hey you walk in and go get contacts that is a whole ordeal. So it really stressed me out watching him do that. I was like, you don't understand what she's going to have to go through right now. Yeah, that was just really, I, I, I wrote, 
no uh i would be infuriated if somebody broke my glasses yes and And, um, i would have smacked them yeah a hundred percent and the queen doesn't trust him. Like you see that scene, mm-hmm. like when he comes in, she tells Charlotte, watch him. So if you don't trust this guy, you're telling me you can't find anyone else to do this if you can't trust him. Like you're telling him to can side- go in and brush her hair and straighten it and pluck her right. hair. I'll bump that real quick with a flat iron. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a... Uh, um, pretty woman moment where she's wearing the headphones and kind of rocking out uh, while they're but I'm like Mia you know they're trying to paint your toes stop moving yeah I know she's so do you know what I love Mia but she does have a lot of rude moments yes I mean yeah but she's a kid I know she's a kid but I'm just saying she's grown enough to know I, I feel like she's too old to be doing some of this stuff Mm-hmm. <laughs> again the walking on the grass i just don't walk on grass <laughs> disrespectful my toddler knows not to walk on people's grass like it's just, <laughs> right <laughs> it's just home training that's all yeah and so there's the the reveal to grandma and she says better much better <laughs> and that's exactly the same uh response i would have gotten from my grandma <laughs> And then it's the next day, Limo pulls up, Michael's playing his harmonica, waiting for his ride. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I put up. harmonica, that's it. <laughs> I actually put Michael in that damn harmonica. <laughs> you said that before in another episode. I can't remember what movie it was. I guess I'm disgruntled about harmonica. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Which I don't know why, because he, uh, Taylor Hansen plays the harmonica, and I really love it in the songs that- Maybe nobody else does it for you. Right? Maybe. <laughs> it's just John Popper and Taylor Hansen are the only Yeah, that's all that, you can handle. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. You're Thanks for validating my harmonica prejudice. <laughs> yeah, because it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> and then so Michael is awestruck with Mia's makeover. Yeah. And Lily, oh, this bitch. Oh, this is a such, it makes me so upset. So upset every time. Lily with the horrible hair <laughs> <laughs> says, who destroyed you? You look ridiculous. You should, you sue. should sue. She has about 10 different tiny ponytails all sticking straight up on the top of her head. She has no room to ju- judge. As soon no. as she, like, honestly, the amount that that um, she was allowed to say, I mean, she could have maybe gotten out the who did that to you, whatever you should sue, and she would have had a pop lip, and she would have been walking to school. Michael, yeah. get in. We're going to school. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael's sitting there trying to defend her, like, no, yeah. she, she looks great. Yeah. And Lily is just so overbearing and her opinion is the only one that matters. So, and in that time, I really did try to, cause when you're that young and you don't understand your emotions and, you know, especially with friendships, because it, it does kill when you, you like, there's nothing like finding that best friend and you do Mm -hmm. everything with them. And the moment something else happens, maybe they meet another friend or a boyfriend or something else takes their attention it does hurt. You take it personally Mm -hmm. and you do get upset. It's like trying at that age to just figure out how to learn, how to communicate and have interpersonal relationships. I get that. And And I think sometimes you react before you even think about it. It just, yeah. And and I, I, I think in some ways, psychologically for Lily, I think she, she kind of got a kick or maybe she felt it made her felt good that she had a friend like Mia and Mia being, you know, scared to talk and she could only talk to her Mm -hmm. um, and that she was just shy and didn't have really good self-esteem. It's almost like she was able to feel good about being a little bit step higher than, than her, than um, Mia and made her feel better about herself. And so with Mia finally reaching into her potential and starting to like speak up for herself, look good, it, I think it just messed with her. And I do think at times she could be supportive. It does flip flop. 
she's an asshole, but uh, <laughs> I, I do think I really did think about what, what it was like to be that age. And some of it was probably jealousy. Like she got a makeover, she gets yeah. a new backpack. Yeah. Like after Lily finds out that she's going to be a princess, now she has all of this power, make change. And yeah. Lily just doesn't know how to handle. And she can't that. get anybody on her cable show. So right. she's right. a little bit upset. <laughs> she only has 12 viewers. Right. <laughs> she's salty. Yes. yes. She's salty because all of a sudden this grandma came and everything's changing. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean for our relationship when I've depended on you to be this type of person and Mm -hmm. now you're blossoming. And I think it takes you to have your own self-esteem within yourself to be a cheerleader for another friend. And some people don't ever learn that skill or they don't learn it till later. Um, And so I think we're just seeing that it's not until the second movie we start to see her be a better friend and so Mm -hmm. because we've seen the the second movie as we're watching this movie I I feel like it gave me a little bit more grace for her yeah and then Joe notices because Mia starts to cry in the limo because Lily is just being so mean to her and so Joe kind of notices and he cares about Mia and and her well-being and he knows all of this is really hard on her yeah and so he tells her no one can make you feel inferior without your consent some things you're just gonna have to learn to to let go and it's probably like a pep talk from you're gonna get this when you're royal so you you have to kind of create mental barriers for some of this stuff learn some personal boundaries too yes yeah Mm -hmm. and that's a hard that's a hard lesson for I think many, and I think this movie kind of now looking at it through adult eyes does a pretty good job, I think, for young people in that sense to show them that. Yeah, I yes. think it was an important scene mm-hmm. for a lot of kids who don't, who don't, who haven't found their voice yet. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Lily like corners her and tells her that she's going to take her friendship bracelet thing off because she knows something's going on. And then finally Mia tells her what's going on. And then she's supportive. And then they go inside the school. And then we get to that classroom scene Mm -hmm. where that Lana asshole is like, no one's supposed to be wearing hats. And then she takes off her hat. I think they should have done it in slow motion, let her hair flip a little bit. And then Lana be like really upset you know, but they, they just went into straight making fun of her. And then her new best friend that she doesn't know yet comes and tells her like, Hey, <laughs> yes. your hair looks really good. You're yes. gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, um, Lily has a nice positive moment where she's like, Voltaire or hair? I rather <laughs> Voltaire. Yes. <laughs> you did that That's so good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And then after that, we see Mia and her mom spending some quality time together and making that wonderful balloon dart art that she said her parents did in the 60s. So therapeutic. So therapeutic. We need to find a place to do balloon dart art. Yeah, that would be cool. And so we get to the next day, Mia's rolling up to school and someone has alerted the press that she is a princess and that she attends that school the queen shows up pretty quick thereafter yeah maybe that she's not that far from the school the consulate what I love (laughs) that I had never noticed until this viewing is that Clarice takes the microphone from one of the reporters and puts it in his breast pocket (laughs) and keeps walking I I wrote I, I I wrote the same thing I've never noticed that never. and then I was like I like how she puts the microphone in his pockets and and he is he wearing shorts yes <laughs> he's business from the waist up party from the waist down <laughs> I, I never in my life noticed that part before but yeah that was <laughs> hilarious so then they go in and they're talking to vice, vice principal, principal Gupta um (laughs) (laughs) and so they're trying to figure out how to keep me a safe at school and keep the press out and then gupta is just kind of like fawning all over the queen and kind of interfering with things yeah (laughs) and why so good (laughs) 
I love Sandra O oh so freaking much. Same. It's not even f- anything she's in. I will watch it like mm-hmm. legit. But why is the teacher in that in there? Doesn't he have a date with mom? He's being like, oh, I'm <laughs> right. a new daddy. So right. I'm hey, so sure I mean, okay. he, it was super, it was just weird. Like the mom made sense, but unless you're going to have all the teachers or are we supposed to believe that he's her only teacher? Like, I'm so confused at this. Well, school. there is only one, one classroom room. in this whole yeah. school. And we probably <laughs> have one office, which doubles as a teacher's lounge. So that's probably why he was there as well. <laughs> or maybe he was in just. The budget to have a bigger school set, so. <laughs> or maybe he was team lead where like you go and then you disseminate information to the rest yeah. of the, the teaching team. That Who knows? Sense. He's there because he he's sweet on mom. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He wanted to <laughs> fill that dad role for me. I was like, oh, I'll help you. Yes. yes, mom. She's got it going on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so after this scene is Joe shooting hoops, holding an umbrella with one hand. Skills. The man's got skills. skills. I can yes, see why, why Julie Andrews likes him. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Lily is waiting for Mia. Mia comes, runs up the bleachers, spins around, and Eats falls. It. Yes. And so apparently that was not scripted. Anne Hathaway actually fell. All of the concern is real. Yeah, Joe looks like, really, and Heather looks like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> you can tell she like broke character the way she said, because Lily would not be that nice. No. Lily would have been like, you're okay? Okay, and continue talking. Right. But, but Heather was like, you okay? Yeah. And then goes, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Keep going, keep going. Like, continue the scene. Yeah, it was totally like, yes. <laughs> yeah, but when we were watching it, my husband was doing other things, but he was like in the room. And so I was like, honey, watch the scene. She actually slipped and fell. And uh, he made me rewind it a couple of times. He was like, oh, <laughs> she ate it. <laughs> yeah, she hit that bleacher hard. She, she, she like, had a bruise 100%. <laughs> I felt yeah. that one. Well, because yeah. at the end of the scene, you kind of see her kind of checking herself out. Like, <laughs> man, it probably hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she was committed. <laughs> And then Lily's going on and on about her damn cable show again. <laughs> and she, she asked, well, be, we missed a part where Michael does ask her to, after school, to, to come watch the band play or something. Mm-hmm. So she's booked herself for that, that Friday, right? Mm-hmm. And sorry, now this part where you were about to say. Oh, so yes. we missed the part where Lily goes, I wait for me, not you. I don't know you. I yeah. <laughs> I do love that line too. I just, it's so funny. I swear we've all done something like that. It just, in her rudeness, not you. I don't even know you. <laughs> so good. There's so um, many little moments like that though with this there movie. Is. And I feel like it's a very Gary Marshall, Marshall thing. Those little, yeah, I love it. <laughs> and so Mia finally, because the secret's out, she agrees to be on our cable show. And Lily says, I'm going to get you another charm for your charm bracelet. So buy in Mia's love. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and so then we go to, it's kind of just a dinner with some of the Genovian. Yeah, there's two events people. that she has to go to. One is the, I think it's the Genovian anniversary or their Independence Day dinner mm-hmm. or something. Oh no, that's the ball. I think it's their oh. Independence Day. And then the dinner is just like a... A like a dinner. states of dinner yeah and all and those actors are not european they're no, they're, no, they're no, like no. american actors the lady who played the wife to the dr- oh i know his name lord fricker um <laughs> his wife is the lady who played the housekeeper in the second one in the second one one of the waiters is the same waiter that caught the escargot in pretty woman yeah, and he says, Even the, same says line. the same line. Yeah. Yes. The lady who is not a looker, her and her <laughs> husband are hoping that the country reverts back to them because they're like second in line. He I says, do love their little spots. They're so cute. I, I do too. <laughs> and he very lovingly says, your name will be on a postage stamp. <laughs> I feel like this whole shtick for him is the only way he got her to marry him. The only way he's keeping her around 
That's mm-hmm. what, like, that's all I envision when I see this couple. But what would have been great is in the second movie, since it's all about trying to steal the throne, why they weren't in there if mm-hmm. they're second in line. Just, I never thought about it until I rewatched, but like, they should have been vying. I would have loved to have them back. I really dislike the whole sherbet <laughs> incident. The, um, yeah. yeah. I'm like, how did you not know it was going to be cold? I don't understand. Same. (sighs) At the dinner scene, when the guy's arm was on fire, you know how he puts it in the bucket of ice? Yeah. Well, the fire didn't go out right away. And that was Anne Hathaway genuinely being scared. And she threw the water herself. Like (laughs) the water didn't go out. (laughs) And they left that in. And so I thought that was really, I thought that was really cute too. There's so much of like little things like that with her that she's doing herself. So I thought that was cute too. Oh, she's such a gem. America's sweetheart. And I really, really love the comic relief of that little Asian man who is not (laughs) like not with anything until the grapes land on his plate (laughs) and then he's hysterically laughing I'm like I really appreciate you man (laughs) I love the part where the the Scottish guy pulls out the pictures of his his grandkids or his kids because Julie Andrews face looks so like oh god because he has he's wearing a kilt so he has like one of those hilt bags (laughs) <laughs> and the front of his crotchal region and he starts <laughs> digging through it to pull out pictures of his grandkids and julie andrews is just like i don't know what's about to happen <laughs> i feel weird <laughs> it's like it is written all over her face she is highly uncomfortable with this <laughs> what is going on right now <laughs> and then Thanks. we we cut to mia and clarice are spending time together on the wharf they go to the vintage arcade but I love how the queen, like totally 2021 after the personal pan pizza starts wiping down the, the hand before she grabs it. <laughs> Chris knew about yes. germs before we all needed to know about germs. She is literally. She was ahead of her time. Yes. She really was. And then she tries a corn dog for the first time. And it's a very sweet bonding moment. She, she says, that it is delicious. <laughs> that whole scene warms my heart because it reminds me of my grandma taking me to this South Street Seaport in New York. And before all the other grandkids were around, it was just me and Myrtle. And <laughs> oh, Myrtle. oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> they get in the car, right? They decide to yes. drive her baby. Yes. Why? Baby. I don't know. Okay. So my mom grew up in the Bay Area and mm. She was a licensed driver, had been driving for at least a couple of years, bought a brand new car, which happened to be a manual transmission car, and decided to go to San Francisco to drive it around. And she said, that is the worst mistake of her life. (laughs) She will never do it again. And she just (laughs) prayed the whole time that she did not roll back into anyone because of how steep the streets are. So for an unlicensed 15-year-old with no experience in a car that tends to break down, and a lady who hasn't had a license for 40 years. What was she thinking? Right. It was a totally dangerous situation. 100%. Yeah. And I don't even know why when they did hit the trolley that they were even trying to convince the trolley people not to like get them in trouble or even the yeah. police. You have diplomatic immunity. There's nothing that could be done to either one of them. Yeah. They're Genovian city- citizens. And I learned that from white collar. <laughs> <laughs> thank you matthew bomer <laughs> so they roll back into a bus it's not a trolley oh it's not a cable car what it is, has wheels it's a bus it's just a bus that looks like a trolley car you learned me again today jackie you know <laughs> the finer details i did know princess diaries <laughs> and so there's this huge argument and finally the queen kind of comes up with this this sham of I'm gonna essentially knight you all so that you guys don't press charges <laughs> what's interesting oh though is she's like I need something like a scepter or a, a sword and someone tries to hand her an umbrella and, she's and she like, likes she's like mm. is it because 
I she's not Mary Poppins. Mary yeah. That's what I took oh. it as. I thought that was his like Easter egg to like, nope, that was Mary Poppins. That's yes. what I, took it as. I I think it's so funny that Anne Hathaway has been in a movie with both Mary Poppins now. Oh Emmy, my gosh, yes. Emily Blunt in The Devil Wears Prada and Julie Andrews in this movie. Oh my gosh, that's true. She's doubly blessed. Yeah. She is. <laughs> but she started out as a princess. Like this was just such a great, I'll just keep saying it, it was such a great breakout yeah role for her she just good for her and it would she she did it so perfectly she is Mia yeah 100 when I worked at Blockbuster there I worked with this girl named Sam and she she maintained that it was her and Anne Hathaway in the running for Princess Diaries (laughs) she was very pretty and she like looked like she would fit whatever casting type it was Mm -hmm. and I do remember her taking time off to go to the cat like casting calls and she did tell me that they went with Anne Hathaway because of her hair and then in the behind the scenes that's what they said is like Gary Marshall's grand granddaughters chose Anne Hathaway because she had princess hair so I mean, she could be making it all up, but I tend to believe that she was probably close to being. I thought the Princess Diaries. I thought for sure she was a liar, and now we're learning, right? (laughs) That she was probably not. (laughs) He's listening to right now. Go ahead, say say. (laughs) vindication. (laughs) There were were so many people up for the role of uh, of Mia. They offered it to Juliette Lewis, which I can't even imagine. Because no she's hate ten- to her, but yeah. she's a lot older. Yeah, like, yeah. All the choices I was reading, I was like, all these people are a lot older. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But Liv Tyler, which not yeah, not so because she it, in ninety five she was seventeen, so it wouldn't have yeah. been that bad. Oh. Kirsten Dunst, Alicia Silverstone, Jessica Biel, Claire Danes, they they all were approached before they got to Anne Hathaway. Really, yeah. Anne Hathaway's perfect. Sorry, Sam, but yeah, Anne Hathaway was perfect then the baker beach bash is happening (laughs) josh has asked mia to go with her her dreams are coming true and so she's trying to figure out which bathing suit she should wear and telling her mom about how she she hopes she has her first foot popping kiss me too and then the worst in my opinion the worst scene of the whole movie is that like dream sequence with the Mm -hmm. foot pop with the gum Mm -hmm. I hate, it. I hate it so much I don't like yes, the whole be- the, I don't like the whole beach scene at all I felt Damn. like it was so unnecessary because it felt like that would be a different movie mm-hmm. like yes the stuff at school it bothers her but that's not the main strife of her storyline mm-hmm. so I just felt like it was unnecessary if you take that scene out I mean you probably need another reason why maybe the grandma wasn't was mad at her and she didn't initially show up yeah but uh I don't know that was just but we wouldn't have gotten Mandy Moore singing though we yeah, needed to yeah, have Mandy Moore singing that's true that's <laughs> the Cupid is a box so. it, it is. is a box with her backup singers that don't sing not at all <laughs> oh. so and then I feel did like you... that's why that scene was put there so we could have a quick little performance of Mandy yes yeah. so Josh and Mia go out on his boat did you see what his boat is named? No. What is the, it? The Josher. <laughs> what? Okay. The yeah. That's amazing. And then press shows up via helicopter. And so they go and hide out in this boat house. For some <sighs> reason, Josh needs a foot rub. At that yeah. And time. he is like, all too willing to do it and Gross. then you know obviously the press find them in there and he's all for it and then the cameras but this is the scene that irritates my soul why why would you these bitches that have been after you all mm-hmm. your life Mia this way over here Mia you can hide out here nah bitch I'm gonna go the other way like why <laughs> why would she be that dumb I do really love when she takes off her chancla and hits him in the head with it. (laughs) I really do love that. And then, yes, it was, they tell her to hide or to get changed in the changing booths. Yeah. I I don't know. That's child pornography first and foremost. Yeah. (gasps) True. 
Ugh. True. I know all the laws. Olivia, <laughs> Olivia B- Benson teaches me on SVU. <laughs> yeah. So then that, it just the whole scene is just it just doesn't like you said it doesn't make sense it's but but then again she's not there with Lily so maybe she's just desperate and like oh they want to help me yeah yeah tragic too trusting too <laughs> trusting <laughs> so now we're back at school it's all over in the newspapers people are asking her to sign um their new copies of the newspapers Josh did and it's like a picture of him and her kissing her foot didn't even get to pop because it was caught in a fishing net um, <laughs> it wasn't a poppable kiss it was not it was cringy <laughs> so then Lily and Michael Michael is just incredibly hurt and was yeah because like, she didn't show up wait wait no that's it was that the did she go to this beach party instead of going out with Michael and she misses Lily's the cable show. Cable show. Yeah, so I think now Michael's... that she's out, she was going to do ca- Lily's cable show. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I think Michael's thing was during the day and Lily's thing was at night. And so she blew off Michael's thing for the, the beach bash. And then she was so upset with what happened. She didn't go to the cable show. I mean, at least we got to see Jeremiah's magic tricks. <laughs> I would watch I, it all day. I love, I love Jeremy. He's so cute. He's so sweet. He, really he did is. not get enough, uh, enough screen time. Nope, not at all. And seems like he, he knows his way around a stock. Oh, like what? he was looking at his portfolio and he said it was <laughs> doing well. You can, oh, you, <laughs> you telling me you got money, right? <laughs> <laughs> seems like the better choice than Michael. My right. Don't sleep Michael on Jeremiah. Wants to work for free and doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> Just wants to play his music. Yeah, <laughs> his music. He's artsy. So Lily's upset that Mia didn't show up for her cable show and broke her brother's heart, and is upset that Lily wants to make all this change in the world and she has zero power. Mia has all of this power and exposure now and doesn't want it and doesn't want anything to do with it. And so Mia's like, I'm really sorry. I messed up. I really hope that you come to the ball. I'm inviting you. And they they kind of go their separate ways. And then we're back to baseball. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good scene though. Yes. Mia needs to take out some aggression somewhere. And so now she she's batter up. <laughs> everyone's like move it in like they do because they know you hit like a girl yeah the first one she fouls it goes over by the cheerleaders they all mm-hmm. scream <laughs> Gupta who is in like a business suit is- <laughs> oh great <laughs> she yells at them it's a ball not a snake <laughs> <laughs> just being a jerk order me a pizza will you not paying attention Mia line drive right to the stomach <laughs> which yeah. I think was supposed to be like a crotch shot but yeah but it's but Disney, it's Disney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't have that <laughs> but I thought um, he did good to go double over like he did and yeah yeah he, he was very across. very dramatic he yes. was <laughs> and so Mia gets a home run The way she slid into home plate, she would have had such road rash. So bad. Just in time for the ball in a strapless gown. Oh, but I digress. (laughs) (laughs) And so she goes to try and apologize to Michael and he says, it's okay. I just consider myself royally flushed. I was like, oh, sick burn, Michael. (laughs) (laughs) What happened oh. to his acting career, really? <laughs> right? <laughs> and so oh. now, like, Mia's tried to make amends with all the people that she's upset that she actually really cares about and has learned you can't sweat the haters. Yeah. So Lana is taunting her again, just saying shit. Mm. So Mia has had enough. Oh, they're, they're putting on sunglasses because it's the Jeremiah hair glare because his hair is bright red. Yeah. It's Lady so jealous. stupid. We just love Jeremiah. He right. just yeah. She was sweating oh. him. She oh. she was <laughs> she was like secretly wanting some of that. That's at least Jeremiah sure. washes his hair. 
Exactly. Right. <laughs> it's not all greasy and everything. Yeah. Thank you. Mia's eating an ice cream cone. She's like, hey, that's a Talana. Hey, that's a really nice clean uniform and just smears ice cream all over it. Well, I was never satisfied with that scene, mainly no. because a bitch slap was needed. <laughs> yeah, seriously. but it's a Disney movie. Whatever. The best we could do is a trip, is... maybe. <laughs> and then Vice Principal Gupta goes, oh, that's too bad. Send it out for dry cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Her one liners are so oh, good. Chef's kiss. So good. Everyone just starts chanting, Lana got coned, which <laughs> come up with better taunt. These mean kids are like, honestly, they're very G rated. The only two bad instances that were like level up to maybe real teen movie, mm-hmm. mean girls, is the scene at the beach with the changing room. Yeah. And the bulimia comment. But other than yeah. that, pathetic. Real PG. It's definitely like grandpa humor, grandpa. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? No hate to Gary Marshall. Love him. But that's what it like reminds <laughs> me of that little bit of cheese. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know girl world a hundred percent. Yes, definitely. And so the next scene is Michael's at practice and he receives a pizza delivery. He's like, nah, man, I didn't order anything. And the pizza guy opens it up and it just says, sorry, and M&Ms on the pizza. (laughs) And that was the way to back to Michael's heart. Yeah. He was was like, she she got me with the pizza, bro. With the (laughs) M&Ms. That's how I know we were meant to be. Yes. (laughs) And so then Mia is, she's at home. And I think Joe says, hey, do you need a ride to the thing? And she's like, no does she oh she decides she's gonna run away like a true mm-hmm. bitch i think that's what sets <laughs> off her saying sorry to everybody because she knows she's leaving town yeah she's like <laughs> i'm out of this place but she finds the key to the journal and she she sees what her dad says because she's about to give up the throne because we mm-hmm. missed the part where the grandma chews her the hell out which was yes very queen like but not grandma like at yeah. all And so Mia was very hurt by that. And so I think she's decided she doesn't want to be anything of Genovia. And then she reads her dad's note and she, cause she wasn't, I don't know if she was going to even show up, but Joe's like, do you want me to take you to the, you know, ball? She's like, no, I got this. And she's like, I'm going to drive my baby. And uh, everybody should have said no to that. Um, (laughs) And, but then she realizes that this is for me. My dead daddy told me so. So she's ready to go. And now it's pouring outside and she's driving a convertible Mustang. Yeah. And it has damage and no (sighs) emergency brake. She has the time to get out of the vehicle and call a cab or somebody to come get her. There is no, she just gives up. Yeah. Yeah. Just lays there and gives up. I don't understand. Singing that damn song. (laughs) <laughs> catch a falling star put in your, your pocket, pocket. <laughs> every thing away so ridiculous get up sister do something girl Would power you- i don't know you don't just sit there in water and drown in the rain it was so weird first of all it could never be a black woman my hair <laughs> look at this i'm not getting wet <laughs> My baby or my hair? I choose my hair. (laughs) Always your hair. The hell. Everybody at the ball realizes that Mia is not there yet. Mm -hmm. Queen starts to get really nervous. And so Joe, being the true hero he is, says, I'm going to go find her. And he finds Mm -hmm. her where? On the streets, crying. And he gets her there. She doesn't change. They say it's not enough time. She get to like greet everybody. They're still wringing out her hair. She looks a hot mess. Yes. In true Mia style. But she accepts the throne. The royal fate. Yes. Yeah. The royal fate. <laughs> Princess. 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 <laughs> of Genovia. I I'll just like much- how she says her name though too. In that, yes. whole, that whole little part. Yeah. I was like, she knows her name. I'm so proud of her. <laughs> I got teary-eyed watching it. I was like, oh my God, what's happening? I was like, <laughs> I love this for us. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Um, and then she goes and has obviously a proper change mm-hmm. and her grandma is proud of her. Lily is there. Her new... Also, they got mad at hairdresser guy for selling her out to the press, but I love and that he's they bring her back in here. Yeah, yeah, and he comes back for the royal wedding. That's why I was like, what's happening here? <laughs> Toxic. What, what does cool. he have on Queen Clarice? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. There's definitely, she, he probably found out about her and Joe and he's like ready to leak it 100%. Yeah. And so then, you know, everyone she loves is there and then she's dancing. And she sees her boo. The pizza, the M and M's, they worked. He's got his hair grease slicked back. Oh gosh! <laughs> the amount of budget that went to some grease on this this movie <laughs> expense. And, uh, they walk out to the garden. Joe goes, "They stole my idea. The garden is <laughs> occupado." <laughs> <laughs> and so Mia and Michael have her first real kiss in foot pop, which turns on all the garden lights. My question, why weren't the garden lights on already? It was a party. Yeah. Maybe they were going to have fireworks and the lights would have distracted from that. I just made that storyline up. (laughs) Oh, but I like it. (laughs) And then um, you see Joe and Clarice holding hands. Yep. And then here is done. Apparently they're dancing to Madonna's Like a Prayer in the scene when they were shooting and then they dubbed it with miracles happen every day okay sorry <laughs> now have you tried watching that to see if the, if their moves really go along with like a prayer because even the robot that they yeah do all that. i just chalked it up to white people dancing so <laughs> i didn't think that would have made a difference either way oh god so <sighs> Life yeah. is a mystery. <laughs> I think it works. <laughs> hey, you've been friends with No Rhythm Jackie for far too long. <laughs> you, you've lost all faith in no faith dancing. No faith. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> the okay. end is a voiceover. Mia, she's on a plane flying to Genovia. Michael and Lily are coming for the summer. And then the real star of the show gets his tiara in the end. That Fat Louie. Louie. <laughs> and the, you know, there's four cats that played Fat Louie in this movie? Four. One well, of them actually was Anne Hathaway's cat, by the way. I love that. Mm-hmm. But you know, I love a cat. So. Yeah. They said they had one cat for that was a, that allowed people to carry him. One could sit still. One was a stunt cat that could jump. <laughs> And then there was a cat used for that final scene. I w- I didn't know which one Anne Hathaway's cat was. I want to say he's the one that chilled at the end. I, that, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Probably and then one of this those cat, cats. The podcast. <laughs> one of our many podcasts. <laughs> oh. We did the Princess Diaries. We did the other, damn thing. We, we did, did do the damn, damn thing. thing. <laughs> and Are there any other factoids that we missed that we want to talk about really quick before we go into our ratings? I didn't see the, it's either mid credit scene or end credit scene where Mia kicks the soccer ball and like falls. Oh, I just seen that for the first time because as it was ending, I was enjoying the music and I'm like, (laughs) you know, I'm dancing around the house. I love to dance with the kids. And then I started to do the dishes and I just kind of happened to come back and seen that. I went, Oh, I never seen saw, it before. I, I've yeah. never seen it either. Jackie, have so you? So it's either, it's right at the end or like the credit scene. She's like on the soccer field and she goes to kick and it looks like a full on real, you know, <laughs> banana peel slip. You should, if you haven't fast forward it to it, it's really cute. And I just thought, oh, that's adorable. And then I went to go look it up and that was completely just Anne Hathaway and they just threw it in there for the end. Yeah. That does so seem cute. like <laughs> something that they would do. Yeah. Well, and I think the only thing that we missed was Whitney Houston was one of the film's three producers. And she yes. also helped produce Princess Diaries too. As well. And Cheetah Girls. She was out there helping Queen us live love. our best 2000s life. Also, Hector Elizondo, who played obviously Joe, he's been in every single Gary Marshall movie, which I think is really cool. It kind of talks to what we were saying earlier about them. I love that though. A crew. Me too. Because isn't Charlotte his daughter? Uh, yes. Charlotte is, no, Gary Marshall's daughter. 
That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlotte's Gary Mar- Marshall's daughter. Yeah. Also, Julie Andrews wore a half a million dollars worth of Harry Winston diamonds in that last scene. Like and the queen she is. Yeah. <laughs> and but Anne's tiara was custom made and a little bit cheaper. She didn't get to keep that one, but she did. Keep, they did send her a replica after the movie was wrapped as a congratulations. So she does have a tiara. So gotta love that. I will say this, love the movie, but I felt like her last dress was just underwhelming. Yeah, why, why? I, that's why I love the second movie because they have that beautiful red dress and it, with her skin complexion, I just feel like white washes her out. Her out. Yeah. And maybe like a nice lavender would have been nice. I loved her in her blue, what she wore in the state yes. dinner. That's one of my favorite, her little, and everything, pretty much almost everything she wears in the second one, I really like. But I was so excited for like her last dress to be something. And I was like, oh, it looks like a bridesmaid dress. Is what yeah. It, yeah. Or even a wedding dress. It was not yeah. cute. But Julie Andrews. Amazing. Mama was rocking a hundred percent. She looked, I think they should have put her in more of like, a, like a, a pretty blue dress or green something just yeah. a standout color. I just feel like it did hundred percent. And apparently Gary Marshall was just as obsessed as we are with Julia Andrews. When he was doing this movie, he didn't even think of anyone else. He knew he had to have him some Julie Andrews in this movie. How could you not? I mean, he was obsessed, 100%. He's so obsessed that when they were filming this movie, he stayed in the same place that she stayed in when she shot a different movie. Mary like, Poppins. Mary Poppins, yes, thank you. Which also, they they shot at stage two at Walt Disney Studios where Mary Poppins was filmed and later they named the stage after Julie Andrews because why not? Yeah. <laughs> So great, great movie, but let's see where we, we fall now that our adult selves have seen it. What are your ratings? Uh, Samantha, what's yours? I'm definitely, I'm owning it. I'm keeping it. It's a five day rental. I, like I said, I'm a mom, I have an 11 year old and we're at the age where I'm showing her all the stuff I grew up on. Yeah. And this is one of those that it was an immediate first one. Oh, we're watching princess diary and I guarantee you'll love it. And she did, you know, and it's a long movie too yeah. for kids, mm-hmm. you know, but she understood everything. It spoke to her. She saw herself in Mia because of the clumsiness yeah. and everything. I, I think this, except for the little jokes here and there that we talked about, I really think this will last time. This yeah. is a classic. Yes. My daughter will probably be showing her kids. I yeah. like, we're still watching Mary Poppins. I just, I think this is one of those Disney classics, 100%. Modern, you know, the newer ones. I totally love it. So would you, is it a five-day rental or would it still be, would buy it, would buy it again? Would buy it again. Yeah. I'm all, but it's Disney for me though. I, I have that emotional attachment. I saw it with my grandma, you know, so, yeah. but it's, it's, I told you I rewatch it often with my daughter. So it's a I, good one. I'm right there with you. I honestly, there are some of those movies that you, you could rewatch it and it could be horrible. It doesn't age well. And you're still like, nah, still love it. Still would buy mm-hmm. it. And that yeah. is how I feel about this movie. So my, my husband even asked same. me that he goes, do you still like it? Like you did then? And I said, yes, it's, it's cute. Yeah. And he would walk by here and there and he would laugh and go, oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah it's a Gary Marshall it, film. You know, it holds up hundred percent. It really does. Jackie, yes. it, what's, what's your I, rating? I agree. I own it on iTunes. So I didn't even watch it on Disney plus. I, <laughs> <laughs> like I paid for this. I'm going to watch it on iTunes. Yeah. But yeah. Would buy it, would buy it again. I had fun watching it. Ken had fun watching it. It's just, it's a really easy movie to watch and enjoy. Well, you heard it here. We loved it. (laughs) I mean, I'm not, I don't think anybody should be surprised at this point, but if you have any feedback or any um, factoids that we missed, or if you have a recommendation for another movie you'd like us to do on the podcast or any questions for Samantha or for anything that happened during this episode, you can hit us up on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube at No More Late Fees, or you can give us a call and be featured on one of our episodes. Jackie, give those people that number. 909-601-NMLF, 909-601-6653. Leave a message and you could be featured on a future episode. And we definitely have to give another shout out to Samantha for joining us and just going through this process with us. And we hope you really enjoyed it. We definitely loved having you on. Again, Samantha, tell everybody how they can interact and follow you on your pages. 
Thank you, uh, Jackie and Danielle. This was really fun. Um, I feel like we have I feel like I worked at Blockbuster with you girls. Like I feel like we just, this was so fun. And I am so serious. Please, if you guys do a Josh Harnett movie, bring me back. I will geek out with you so hard. The people need to know my love for Josh Harnett. And I want to bring it to them. That's we what my IG, my, my Instagram is for. The love of nostalgia, just letting loose, having fun, and realizing how much you love and miss Josh Harnett in your life. And you need to see him. We will so be taking follow up on that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yay. So if you want to follow me for weirdness and funness and Josh Harnett love, uh, lovefool.99 at Instagram. Nice. And next week we're making a hard right turn. We will be doing <laughs> the horror movie classic. I know what you did last summer. Oh my God. Part of our summer series. And until next time. Be kind and rewind.